Welcome back to the Barbasol PBA Tournament of Champions from Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis, Indiana. Sean Rash down by 40 to Jason Belmonte right now. And a grudge match that has gone wrong for Rash. He was working the approach during the break. Well, Sean Rash is checking a part of the approach that never gets used unless you're going to loft the left gutter, Kevin. He wants to make sure he's not going to stick. Pretty smart move. Belmo was over there, too, checking it out as well after Rash did. But the onus on Sean Rash right now, about to bowl his sixth, working on a spare. He's only struck once on the left side. Struck once in the whole game, I should clarify. That coming on the left side. See where he starts and brings it back. Well, that's a really good shot. He's increased velocity, moved in, and he's trying to give himself a chance to hit the pocket. But there in where lies the lower rev rate of Sean Rash versus a Belmonte, a two-hander, he doesn't get the pin carry. Another spare for Rash. There you go. You see him walking left and around the bar return. And playing just right a sixth arrow. I got a re-rack. He said to himself after that first ball, good shot, good shot. Down by 41, asking for a re-rack. So, Randy, let's look at PBA.com and what you can do when you go there, right? Check out the new game for your mobile device. PBA Bowling Challenge, this updated game for select mobile and tablet devices, allows you to bowl against the best PBA bowlers in dozens of events all over the country. New features include 30 different bowling ball options, quick play and career mode options, along with special bonus challenges. Click on the mobile game link at PBA.com to get started. Sean Rash has to get started now. Ch change of balls, Randy. Well, he, Rash comes up with a big ball. Yeah, he went to a ball change and it uh, it worked on the left way. Now, let's see if he can start stringing some not strikes. Over yet. Sends Belmo a little message saying it's not over yet. His max score 237 if Sean strikes out. Belmonte right now at 238. Long way to go still in this match. The shot here is only going to see about half the lane. How did that 10 pin stamp in there having to adjust that ball return every time because they slide by and give it a, a left hip check as they go by? Well, the step pattern that Jason Belmonte uses to walk around that ball return is pretty impressive. What a great example of the skill, strategy, and reading ability these pro bowlers need. As these lanes break down, it, it's like changing a putting surface mid-putt. Just to be able to adjust, pull every tool out of their bag. And so far, Belmo's done a better job of that here in this match. One of the ways to open up the lanes is by having that third step in a five-step approach actually go to the left. Watch Jason Belmonte here. There it is, third step. So, as you heard Sean Rash and Chuck Gardner talking, it's not over. It's not over. And this one is not over. Belma gets it wide. He's going to get the ball over here in the head pin and throw it over into the 6-10. A key cleanup for Belma. <laughs> So close. Well, that's the other way of making it, and that was a pretty bad break there. That's almost like a pocket ringing 10. Watch Rash on the right of your screen. Whew. Says, all right, I've got life. It's my Let's time. Go. My time. Big shot coming up, though, on the right lane. Let's see if Sean Rash can start stringing some strikes. He has not thrown a double yet in this match. Down by 24, he's not thrown a strike on the right side. Keep wasn't it, me. Wasn't keep, me. Keep in mind, no, that was just a Take feel thing for him. Keep in mind, though, no matter what Sean Rash does, he can't shut out Jason Belmonte. 
Jason Belmonte under a bit of adversity right now as he sits and ponders that last frame. Where he opened up in the, the eighth. Adjusting the ball return there. Yeah, the sweep just came down by accident. Uh, something triggered the uh, the reset button. Sean didn't ask for a re-rack. He said he didn't touch it. Key ball for Rash. Can he get himself oh. back in the match? You heard him. You heard the answer right when he released the ball. So Sean can't take advantage of the open frame by Belmonte in the eighth. He's not doubled, has struggled on the right lane. Pretty good strategy. Pretty good strategy by Jason Belmonte. He dictated who started this game. He made Sean Rash start Curtin's the match the back. on the left lane, which and makes Sean finish on the right lane. Nothing but troubles on the right lane. A frustrated Sean Rash down by 24 as he gets set to bowl his ninth. <sighs> right lane is the tough lane. Sean has yet to throw a strike on that lane. So we have some issue with the, the back part of the lane. A little plexiglass is down as we take a look at our other finishers. And Bill O'Neill just missed the step ladder. Just a few pins behind Osku. Osku then got a bonus for winning the final match, but it was just a handful of pins that uh, O'Neill missed. And you see number 20, Doug Kent, just inducted to the Hall of Fame last night, still bowling strong. Rash now trying to get something going. And that could be the swan song uh, for Rash. Yeah, it's over mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes. He went to the weaker ball. He gets it a little bit right, throws a pretty good shot, and the ball was just too weak down the lane. These are the 2 4 8. Belmonte, even with the open frame in complete control, he's going to move on to face Pete Weber. The question in my mind is there enough room on the lane for Pete Weber to get his ball to the pocket? He can't loft the gutter. He told us last night he can't loft the He'd gutter. He'd be in trouble if he had to, he said, yeah. And if he can't get deep enough and find some oil left to get his ball to squirt to the right and get back to the pocket, he's going to have to try something to the extreme right side of the lane and go really, really straight. Belmo, just a formality now as he makes that dance left. <laughs> and that does do it as Belmo looking forward to going back to back majors on the PBA tour and a sweeter victory he could not have asked for here in the semifinals against Sean Rash. <laughs> I'd be curious to see if that smile is on Belmo's face as he pulls the finals. <laughs> I mean, it's almost unfair with that speed and that power from that angle. The carry percentage gets extremely high for a, a two-handed player. The rev rate so high, the ball speed, the pins have no chance, and it just doesn't matter. Jason could throw it halfway down the lane. His ball's still going to hit like a Mack truck. Jason Belmonte just making sure his line is correct for the upcoming championship match. Getting a little practice time, as it were, before he faces Pete Weber. Two bowlers who have tremendous respect for each other. There's also a little salt between the two as Belmo misses his final ball. And we asked Pete, who do you want to bowl in the finals? And he said, I want to bowl and beat Belmo because he let me down on the World Series of Bowling a couple of years ago in the doubles. <laughs> well, again, for me, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not Pete has any room left on this pair. The good news for Pete Weber, he gets to decide 
Thank you, Who Andy. starts and finishes the match. He can make Belmo finish yeah. on the right lane, and the right lane looks to be dry, the drier of the two. 229, 171. It is Jason Belmonte getting ready to meet that man, 50-year-old Pete Weber. Can he make some history by joining the great Earl Anthony with 10 major championships? Jason Belmonte looking for his second major in a row has something to say about that.